we are all used to hearing that our universe originated about 13.8 billion years ago, and that it all started with the Big Bang. Eventually, the universe began to expand, galaxies formed, stars were born and planets appeared. In one of these galaxies, called the Milky Way, life has arisen, which has now developed to such an extent that it has begun to be interested in the question of the origin of life and its place in the universe. And what if everything we know about the universe is wrong? What if the Big Bang is not the beginning of the universe? And what if what we see in the dark sky is nothing but the result of being inside a black hole that originated from some parent universe? Greetings to everyone on the Space Stop channel. In this video, we will talk to you about the theory in which we all live inside a black hole. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel because the team and I are working hard on each video. Well, I wish you a pleasant viewing. This unconventional theory suggests that if the black holes that form in our universe give rise to new universes, then our cosmos may be nothing more than the product of another black hole. But what are the arguments behind this statement today? We will delve into the details of the latest theory that the Big Bang could have been wrong and we have been living inside a black hole all this time. Let's rewind time before humans existed, before the Earth was formed, before the sun lit up, before galaxies appeared, before light could shine at all. It happened 13.8 billion years ago, but what about what happened before that? Many physicists say that there was nothing before that time. They insist that time began to count down at the moment of the Big Bang, and thinking about anything earlier does not belong to the field of science. We will never understand what reality was before the Big Bang, or what it was formed from. The concepts are beyond human understanding, but several scientists disagree with this. These physicists theorize that an instant before the Big Bang, the entire mass and energy of the nascent universe was compressed into an incredibly dense, but finite particle. It is believed that this seed was almost unimaginably tiny, perhaps trillions of times smaller than any particle that man has ever seen, and yet it is a particle that can provoke the formation of any other particle, not to mention every galaxy, solar system, planet and person. So, how is such a seed created? One idea discussed for several years, in particular by Nikodem Poplovsky of the University of New Haven, is that the seed of our universe was forged in the most extreme environment in all of nature, inside a black hole. Over the past couple of decades, many physicists and theorists have come to believe that our universe is not the only one. Instead, we can be part of a multiverse a vast array of separate universes each of which has its own shining ball in the true night sky. This led to another related idea, made famous by Stephen Hawking, that every time we create a black hole in our universe, it can lead to the emergence of a daughter universe accessible only to an observer who crosses the event horizon of this black hole. But what are the arguments underlying these theories about the existence of an event horizon whose boundaries tell a completely different story for an object outside a black hole compared to an object inside it? Outside the event horizon of a black hole, any object will experience its gravitational influence, since space will be warped by the presence of a black hole. But it can still escape if it moves fast enough. It will not necessarily fall into a black hole but it can free itself from the gravitational influence of black holes as soon as the object moves to the other side of the event horizon. Since the fabric of space-time is strongly curved inside the black hole, the falling object will reach the singularity within a few seconds after crossing the event horizon, enlarging the black hole. A black hole appears to be forming, gaining mass and growing over time. But what does this have to do with our universe? If you took all the known measurable forms of matter and radiation in the observable universe, you would have to add everything up after ordinary matter consisting of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Every time the mass of the universe increases, moving and accelerating through the curved fabric of space-time at the furthest limits of what our instruments can detect, we can see about 46 billion light-years away. If you add up all the energy from all these forms in the entire observable universe, you can get the equivalent mass of the universe. 
You can ask a rather deep question if the entire universe were compressed into one point, what would happen? The answer is the same as if you compressed any sufficiently large accumulation of mass or energy into one point, it would form a black hole, which is remarkable about Einstein's theory of gravity. The total amount of mass is the only factor determining how big a black hole is. It is noteworthy that the small daughter radius of a black hole with the mass of all matter in it is almost exactly equal to the observed size of the visible universe. This realization in itself seems like a remarkable coincidence, raising the question of whether our universe could actually somehow be the inside of a black hole. But this is just the beginning of the story. As we dive deeper, Everything becomes even more interesting. In the middle of the last century, a discovery revolutionized our understanding of the universe. A uniform omnidirectional wave of low-energy radiation appeared from all points of the sky. This radiation had the same temperature in all directions, which, as now determined, was 3 degrees Celsius, just a few degrees above absolute zero. The radiation had a particularly perfect black body spectrum, as if it had a hot thermal origin. This radiation was originally called a primordial fireball and is now known as the cosmic microwave background, which is the most important evidence that our universe is expanding and cooling, because in the past it was hotter and denser. The further back we extrapolate, the smaller, more homogeneous and more compact everything happened all the way back. This picture of a hot Big Bang appears to be approaching a singularity as similar to the state observed in the central part of the universe. The interior of black holes is a place where densities, temperatures, and energies are so extreme that the very laws of physics are violated. The interior of a black hole is mathematically identical to the exterior of a black hole. As our understanding of the universe has improved and refined over the past few decades, Two new discoveries have shaken the foundations of cosmology. The first was cosmic inflation, and not the emergence from a singularity, as it now seems that the universe was created as a result of the rapid inexorable expansion that preceded the Big Bang. It's as if there was some kind of field providing the energy inherent in it to space itself, causing the universe to inflate, and only when the inflation ended did the hot Big Bang begin. The second was dark energy as the universe expands and becomes less dense. Distant galaxies begin to move away from us again at an accelerating rate. Although with a much smaller magnitude, the universe behaves as if there is some huge energy opposing space itself, which refuses to dissolve even as space continues to expand. One potential explanation, which is that at an early stage, there was a stronger form of dark energy that existed after the end of inflation, but decayed before the cosmic microwave background dissipated from the primordial plasma. Perhaps inflation and dark energy have more in common than we think, and perhaps black holes will give a critical insight into the nature of this connection. What can this connection be? Black holes could be the answer because they gain mass as material gets into them and disintegrate, losing mass. Due to Hawking radiation, as the size of the event horizon changes, is it possible that this change is the inherent energy of the structure of space for an observer inside the event horizon? Is it possible that what we perceive as cosmic inflation marks the creation of our universe from a supermassive black hole? Is it possible that dark energy is somehow connected by black holes? And does this mean that astrophysical black holes have formed in our universe, that each of them generates its own daughter universe somewhere inside it? These assumptions have been around for many decades, and although we don't have a definitive or provable conclusion, there is certainly some mathematically compelling evidence pointing to a connection. Nevertheless, there are plenty of models and ideas, and this line of thought continues to be attractive to many who study the thermodynamics of black holes and entropy in general. The theory of relativity, as well as the beginning and the end of the universe, unfortunately, no physical model proposed at least so far has been able to make unique predictions that could accomplish the following three things first, reproduce all the successes similar to the phenomenon already observed, which the inflationary leap of the Big Bang has already successfully explained. Second, 
explain the observables phenomena that cannot be taken into account by the prevailing theory. Finally, make new predictions that differ from those predicted by the current leading model, so that we can then go and test it. Unfortunately, these features are not reflected in the data and the idea that black holes generate daughter universes from both the physical and mathematical point of view. It is likely that there is a connection between the birth of our universe and the creation of an extremely massive black hole from a universe that existed before our own. Unfortunately, what is missing is a key step in the form of an ambiguously identifiable signature that could tell us whether this is the case or not. This is one of the most difficult steps for any theoretical physicist to determine the imprint of a new idea in our observable universe, distinguishing this new idea from our old prevailing ideas. Until we successfully take this step, work on these ideas will probably continue, but they will remain only speculative hypotheses. We don't know if our universe was generated by the creation of a black hole, but at the moment it's not a tempting opportunity that it would be foolish to exclude. That's all the information we have for you today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and click on the bell to never miss future episodes and be sure to tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue producing quality content and continuous improvement. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.